My name is Julie Noyola. I'm a graduate of Mel Marie Adaptive Therapeutic Program. I currently teach different energetic modalities throughout the community, such as sound healing, Reiki, and I incorporate somatic integration with yoga as well. What led me to her program out prior was I was in a corporate job, very unhappy, mom of three, I was suffering from depression, and it led me to try to take my own life. And at the time, I didn't know that I didn't have self-care modalities to help me through those stressful moments. Self-care didn't exist. I didn't know what it was. It was how I was raised to always work hard and that if you rest, you were perceived as lazy. That's just the word that I grew up hearing after I did Melissa's program. It was just so beautiful how she always said to love yourself, to love yourself and self-care is a form of, of love and you can't pour from an empty cup. I am living proof of that. The beautiful thing is that even though I hit rock bottom, I was able to come out of it. And my children now, this is the most beautiful thing they tell me. I remember when you used to, I remember when you used to do this and it's complete opposite now and just hearing them say that affirms that I'm on the right path because I'm an example for them of how I was and who I'm becoming. Before yoga and meditation, I was a lot more reactive. I was so in my head all the time. Like I really didn't even know that you could slow down in your mind. Like it just, it felt like it was something out of, out of control. Like I didn't have any control over it. And so yoga and meditation helped me to see that I actually do have all the control over it. It's not like this separate thing that's just like running off doing its own thing you know that's like I finally understand that I actually can control this thing that I have you know so doing yoga and meditation really slowed down slowed me down uh, helped me to connect to myself you know it's like you're operating in this body but you're not really in it and so it really helped me to connect to myself and find me in there so much of my life I spent trying to make you know part of my trauma trying to make sure everybody else is okay trying to make sure everything everybody's good and everybody it's always everybody else so yoga and meditation really helped me to come into myself and like what I need in my relationships I'm a lot calmer and I can instead of like trying to talk over everybody all the time you know it's more like I can listen and I can take things in I don't know it just it calmed me down I, I would take so much on I would just take it and take it and take it and take it until I couldn't take it anymore and then the lid would fly off and I just explode you know so and I don't have that anymore you know it's like I can take things in more and really the mindfulness of just taking in what's happening and processing it in my mind without taking everything so personal really flowing into some really empowering things in these next couple of months and I'm really excited and a lot of that has come from working with you and being able to regulate my nervous system in a different way and being able to walk in who I am and to walk in rooms and know that I'm loved and supported which is something that you told me I go into rooms that sometimes I used to be fearful to walk in but I'm not anymore I feel love and I feel support and I know who I am so I can walk into those rooms with that presence. And that's something that I've learned from you and being in the teacher training with you. And it's, it's helped me a lot. It's been very empowering. So it is a really great space for the therapist on my team and myself to be able to be like, hey, let's go over here. Let's do some yoga. Let's do some mindfulness. And we might do 10 minutes or 15 minutes, but we have this open space that has a lot of light. There's like windows, so it brings a lot of healing, I feel like, inside too, especially when it's really nice outside because the light's coming in and we need that. But then also it allows us to do movement. And so I've seen it used a lot with kids too. So we've done a lot of yoga and mirroring and bringing parents in and being like, hey, like sometimes your 10-year-old or 11-year-old doesn't have the words to express how they're feeling. Let's do some mirroring right? Let's do some movement. And so I'll work with 
the 10 or 11 year old and be like, how are you feeling? Use your movement to show me how you're feeling. And then being able to bring their parent in and they mirror each other so they can feel how the other person's feeling and then figuring out ways to be able to let it go. Like, so being able to be like, hey, we're gonna throw my feelings up and their parent does it with them. We're gonna throw it down to the side, to the right. Then we're gonna get rid of it, right? And we're gonna release it. And it's empowering because you're doing an activity with your parent and you're being able to express yourself in a different way. And then for, for first responders and veterans, it's like, hey, we're gonna try this. We're gonna go over here, cause I got a yoga studio over here. Thank you, Demel. We're gonna try 10 minutes of yoga or just breathing or meditation. And we're just gonna sit down and we're gonna do it. And so I think it's really impactful and powerful to have that space there because we'd be like, oh yeah, maybe I'll try it. Oh, well, guess what? We can try it right now. We can do 10 minutes. End of our session, you walk out, you feel a little different and maybe we'll try it again. Because it disrupts the mental patterns or that feed negative feedback loop that perpetuates pain, but it also gets us to create new neural patterns around welcoming presence where instead of, oh, I'm in pain, it's I notice my pain. We start to notice versus over identify. It makes us less reactive. It's also a tool that I think a lot of people think there's one way to do it when there's so many different ways to practice the traits and techniques of it. Where I look at it with mental health, the big mistake that's happening now with it is providers are just going, oh, you should start meditating, but their patient is super disembodied. They have anxiety. You gotta meet, it's the meeting the patient where they're at. So this is why these providers should offer in clinic or be able to understand this more so they can say, okay, let's let's do tapping first. This is a form of it. Or we'll do this breath-centric experience to get you in your body, now notice, right? So it's about intelligently applying the Vedic techniques and yogic tools. And that's where the organization of education is so important. And so patients need that context so we can be intelligent, intentional, and impactful in the way that we're prescribing these things. So like a lot of times with, with medicine and mental health, um, the providers maybe refer each other back and forth to each other, but there's not necessarily the, the integration all of the time. And so many medical conditions are also, um, you know, they're related to behavioral health as well. Um, not, to, not to blame people for their their medical conditions, but a lot of the, the things that we do, food we eat, alcohol we drink, you know, things like this can manifest into physical conditions as well. You know, you can't help but wonder if some of some of our culture's significant medical conditions could maybe be addressed through behavioral health and changes. And boy, yoga and mindfulness and those kind of things can certainly help, I think, with helping people think about Think about what they're thinking about and what they're doing and the goals they might have for their life and changes they want to make. Well, my name is Jazz Burgess and I am the founder and CEO of Hustle Meets Grace, which is a wellness consulting company that integrates yoga and therapy into our daily lives. And I am a 200 hour graduate from Mel Marie, currently going through the yoga therapy practice and going through the clinical mental health counseling practice um, degree through the University of Texas at San Antonio. As a person who is in the field now, what I'm finding is people often don't have a time to like downregulate their emotions or really take inventory of their emotional mental hygiene. And the yoga practice gives people the container to do that. So being able to use somatic practices to connect back to the body in the instance that maybe there has been some trauma, yoga allows that. And not only that, we know that the mental health care field can be expensive, um, but being able to utilize yoga as an accessible practice for healing has been something that I've seen um, be super beneficial for people, the practice, and actually be able to apply that in accessible ways. My name is Shannon, and I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and I graduated Mel Marie Yoga um, in 2021. And so I like to integrate yoga um, through mindfulness, meditation, grounding, 
into the mental health field, both in individuals and even with couples that I work with, and to help with a deeper level of connection, both to self and to others, and to find healing and restoration in a really deep place. Mental health traditionally is kind of top down, right? Like we talk about it, we process it, it's all cognitive, which is a, is a beautiful thing and it's needed. But I think yoga is more bottom up. And I think that integrating yoga mindfulness into the mental health helps bring this cohesiveness that we don't always get with just mental health. And so I think and I see a lot of the fields moving in that way, even with like EMDR, the eye movement, reprocessing trauma and so I think just essentially reconnecting to the body and helping move it out of the body because the body really does keep the score and it holds all of our stories um, and so I think yeah just yoga helps move that out and accesses a deeper healing that we don't always get with just top down and the body you know we talk about this in teacher training right mm -hmm. the body doesn't care if about the story as much as did it survive and mm -hmm. because it's such a self-regulating organism right that's why the shaking happens all yeah. these ways to naturally pacify tension patterns mm -hmm. but because we've been so socialized out of our bodies yeah as a culture we haven't really learned how to co-create with the body right and so i think in therapy too it's such a big opportunity to bridge these worlds mm -hmm. of somatics and the mind into yeah. one yeah and as you bring that up, I was recently actually just talking with someone who was feeling really, really anxious and um, we were on the phone, so I couldn't see them. And I was like, well, like, what's going on in your body? And she was like, well, my leg is shaking. I like, I can't hold my hand still. And I'm like, well, what are we doing with them? Well, I'm using my other hand to try to make my hand sit still and forcing my legs. And I said, no, 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 that's beautiful. Let it out. Let it happen. Like, we want to encourage that because that's that energy moving out. And so she was like, oh okay so really kind of helping people understand and lean like you said it's we've been conditioned to stifle those responses instead of leaning into them and recognizing wait this is actually serving me this is doing what it's supposed to do and and regulating myself so it doesn't get stuck and stored i think a really big piece of it is the trauma recovery my personal bias is i think everything can be kind of to a degree rooted back to trauma right like not necessarily big T trauma of like an accident, being in war, like those are definitely trauma, but any any place where we've disconnected. And so I think that's where in the mental health field, integrating a lot of yoga, the mindfulness, connecting back to breath, re really coming back home to ourselves, I think is a really big, important and pivotal piece. So yoga for mental health is it goes back to yoga being for the mind. Yoga is for the mind. Half of the limbs are, eight limbs are mental. And when we observe the benefits of yoga, so much of it is to bring the higher faculties of the mind back online. It also helps us reclaim our bodies. From a trauma sensitivity perspective, trauma is disassociation. It separates the mind and body. The body does not speak in language. It speaks in sensation. And this whole need for, yes, the story, the gift of going through the story is that we can make meaning out of it, we can rewire neural pathways, the neuroplasticity that occurs, but there's still this somatic impact that occurs from traumatic experiences, whether it's little t trauma, big t trauma, the mind and body separation is the mind and body separation. But yoga is union. Yoga brings the union of the mind and body. The opportunity of trauma recovery through yogic modalities is so wide because we're teaching people uh, self-determination again, that it's safe to say, it's too hot, it's too cold. I'm gonna change this for myself. You know, it, it unthaws the freeze that paralyzes us when we walk through traumas or compounded traumas. So cultivating self-determination, it creates uh, effective action, like taking effective action in my life. So we cultivate that on the mat by saying, do you want to block or do you not? Choose what you want. We also help people reclaim themselves in the yoga practice because they're getting to explore and then they make choices and they can adapt. They get to say yes and no again which oftentimes trauma pulls that privilege from us to say yes and no, that right. And so we get to turn the volume dial up again on our agency when we practice yoga. So what we're doing on the mat is training us biologically for our day-to-day -day life. And this is where a lot of that, what it was separated, begins to start to weave back in neurologically, 
uh, thought form wise and even sensory wise. So yoga has a lot of opportunity in trauma recovery. I needed something in my life that was a little bit calmer. Um, I think I've done like, you know, running or just more like high impact things. I needed something that was peaceful. I was in a space that there were a lot of things happening in my life. Loss, um, my own um, diagnosis of skin cancer, and then just like running a business is hard. And so there was a lot of different things that brought me, I, I needed something that maybe brought me some more peace. Well, one, I think meeting you and just like who you are and your presence and energy that you bring was um, very peaceful for me and healing. And I think the other thing that brought me to yoga and mindfulness and meditation is the work that I do. And so I'm like, I need to try this. And because um, I got to know you and just like our work um, with first responders, and I was just like, I need to go into this because I feel like it can bring me a different coping skill that I don't have. And since I teach people about having a variety of coping skills, I'm like, I need to do this for myself. And it's been a very healing journey for me. And you know, um, whether I teach people in yoga later in the future, or I just use it for myself, like it's something that has brought me a lot of peace. Before I try to display something or share something with someone else, I like to, whenever possible, have the experience myself. And so being a person that has used yoga to re-identify, you know, personal values and mindsets, um, I think that's been super beneficial for me. And what I found is that being able to use postures to remind me to ground back into who I actually am or to remind me that I am capable of balance or I am capable of taking up space. I can associate that with the yoga practice and not just the postures themselves, but when we think about philosophies in regards to non-judgment or non-harm, doing those things in our daily lives and through the yoga practice, living yoga out loud has really been super beneficial for creating a space of reclaiming wholeness, reclaiming um, authenticity in my own identity. And what I found is that clients who are struggling with mental health issues or emotional um, regulation issues, finding yourself and finding um, where you are authentically is something that helps aid in the healing process of making sure that you can find wholeness and health in your mental well-being. So I feel like for me personally, as a provider, it helps me stay present to really be with them. And then as far as integrating it with clients, with people I meet with, is really just helping them connect back to them. Um, a lot of times they don't have a place where they can really kind of be and process. And so I like to integrate, especially to grounding. I work with a lot of people who feel a lot of anxiety. Um, if it's depression, kind of helping them move some of the energy the stuck energy but especially doing a lot of like grounding practices so i think some access barriers specifically in some of the populations i work with is more of kind of like the financial barriers of oh like i can't afford to live that lifestyle i can't um, afford to go to these classes what whatever it is and so we work with well like you have yourself so you have access to everything you already need and kind of helping them elicit that and connect them back to themselves. Really kind of removing some of the, the language barrier that kind of comes in sometimes and helping just talk to them normal, using their language, meeting them where they're at. Like you've mentioned before is, is really trauma recovery. It's just helping them connect back to themselves, have their own sense of self agency um, and learning their voice and their power and saying like, no, this is this is me and this is what I want. And so helping kind of debunk and, and take away some of those barriers. We're starting to re-sculpt how we communicate with one another and build relationships that are actually meaningful, not obligatory, but meaningful. 
we're starting to, <laughs> I think about uh, just self-knowing and having compassion. You know, yoga is inviting us into a lot of these things that the world is asking for due to this mental health crisis. And, you know, I do believe that the mind is, you know, this is a yogic perspective and I, I really subscribe to it. The brain is like the machine for the mind. The whole body is the mind. The brain is an organ but the mind conveys our entire being. And the mind is the filter to process and understand what is for me, what is not me. What fits into the pattern of the reality that I curated in my cultural framework of knowing compared to what is actually how I'm feeling. The mind is this filter. And the question is, is well, whatever color the filter you have, like what your filter is, is gonna be how you filter it in. And the opportunity with the mental health crisis is to start to look, re, re look at the models and ways we engage with healthy thoughts. I just feel like this is a huge time. This is such an exciting time for behavioral health and mental health to begin adopting tools that actually empower the patient first.